Hey, what's happening, guys? Take a look at this kit we got here. This is the M I O Y O O W Miu Bluetooth DIY speaker kit with L. I think that means LEDs. And the reason we got this kit is I think this would be a terrific project that you could do with a child or a grandchild or niece, nephew. Random child off the street. Please don't abduct random children off the street. But anyway, this is a Bluetooth speaker kit. And what I like about it is we've got two separate levels of difficulty here. Like here's the Bluetooth part. We've got a little control panel. Remote control. All that good stuff and then we have the little soldery part here so you know you could get just about any child you know plug in some connectors put some screws in you know you'd be good to go while you can teach them a little bit about soldering so there's no instruction manual in here but there is this, and if I hold it here and get it to focus, you might be able to get that. Maybe, maybe not. But I've got it over on the computer. Let's go take a look at it before we start building this guy. All right, so we're looking at the remotes here, the remote. We're looking at the instructions here. Features music spectrum display. No. It's going to feature some blinking LEDs. Bluetooth, uh, SD card, zip drive, remote control, power off memory, <laughs> manual soldering, working voltage three and a half, so you three point seven, so you could power this from a single lipo. Bluetooth version five, Bluetooth distance fifteen meters. Wow, that's interesting. All right, component listing. We got some metal film resistors, a CD4017. So yeah, there's no, there's not going to be any music spectrum display. What's going to happen? I think there's a microphone attached to this, and the microphone every time it, you know, it detects the sound, it's going to act like a clock and just. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to, I don't want to guess anything too soon. Yeah, see, there's a microphone. Got some capacitors, speakers, wires, blah blah blah. Remote control. It is a DIY kit. Yes, I know. Please be patient. Okay. So we have our installation steps, installing all the components on that little board. So we're going to install two pieces of 20 kilo ohm metal film resistors, R1 and R3. Then we're going to install 204, two, four, two pieces of 470 ohms at R4 and R5. And two pieces of two mega ohms at R... one piece of two mega ohm at R2. Then we'll install the 4017. Then we will install the LEDs, which need to be bent over. So you don't want to install them flush. That's a, something to keep in mind. We're going to install a transistor, microphone, capacitor, an RGB LED, capacitors. Yeah. You get the idea, right? Let's uh, go build it. So here's a bag containing all of our components. It's like a nice clean single sided board. Let's null out everything so that we're not hunting for stuff while we're building. All right, I've got everything separated out. I put all the hardware that we won't be needing right now back in the bag. We have our microphone, our IC, our transistor, capacitor, 
resistors, and LEDs. Remember that instruction showing that this uh, D11 was supposed to be an RGB? Well, it's not. It's only got two pins, so it's just a standard LED. So, first thing we're going to do is measure these resistors. I mean, yes, you could look at the color codes, but let's just be sure. Let's say I've been burnt in the past. All right, so these ones are... Those are a 470, which I'll mark with a pen. And these ones are... K and that means this one should be two megs yep good now we're ready to start soldering all right so we're going to start with our 20k resistors which go into R1 and R3. I'm just bending them 90 degrees off their edges. There are tools for this that make it easier, but I don't use them. There we go. We'll get some blue tack on here. Hold them in place. Flip it over. And we'll get ready to solder. I'm almost down to the end of my TMI American solder. Maybe we'll get it done with this. Maybe not. I don't know. But we'll see. All right, let's start. A little bit of solder on the end for thermal transfer. There's our first resistor soldered in. Next, we are supposed to do the 470 ohms at positions four and five. So let's come up there a little bit like that so we can get in there. And the same thing with the bending. If you're the OCD type, you know, you might want to keep your tolerance bands all in one direction. I'm not. Which is strange because I have many other OCD tendencies, but this doesn't bother me. All right. Get in there and solder them up. If you have an OCD friend and you like to mess with them, get them a picture of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and mount it plumb and square. Your OCD friend <laughs> will pull their hair out trying to decide if the picture needs to be square to the wall or if the picture needs to be square to itself. <laughs> All right, all of our resistors are done. Let's cut off those legs. Good pair of side cutters. And don't go firing your cutoffs in this space. Because when you or somebody in your family steps on in the middle of the night, there'll be trouble. Trust me, I've got a couple of these on my feet. They hurt. 
I mean, they're not in there now. I removed them, but they were, and they were somewhat unpleasant. All right, since this board has stuff so close to the edges, what we'll do is we'll turn this like this, and then we can put it in, just like so. All right, next on our instruction sheet is what the 2 mega ohm resistor, which goes at R2. Yes, I'm going to fix that one. I love doing stuff like this. It's just relaxing. Just seeing everything fall into place. Oops. All right, we'll fix that one now. So that Barry doesn't get upset. Oh, a little too twisty there, Paul. Hmm. Don't want to go in anymore. All right, well, it is what it is. All right, so next up, we're supposed to solder in our CD4017. And we need to straighten the pin, so we'll put it in the old pin straightener. Somebody asked me, where I got this, it is a custom-made device made by a friend of mine in Canada. Line up our notches. Make sure everything falls into place. A little blue tack. And away we go. What happened there? Oh, it popped out. I might tighten this a little bit more. One moment. Alrighty. We'll uh, solder in opposing corners. Check to make sure she's square to the world. Good. Then we'll just come in and solder the rest of those pins in. Look at that that pad there. It is thinner than all the other ones. I can tell you one thing. This didn't come from PCB way. They wouldn't let low quality work like that come out of their shop. No, mistakes happen everywhere. Nobody and nothing is perfect. That's one of your first electronic lessons you should learn. Nothing is perfect. Everything has resistance, capacitance. Looking good. All right, so now we are on to the LEDs. They don't give us any measurements of how far we're supposed to bend these out, so I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the right distance, maybe not. We are certainly going to find out. Remember, long laid, long. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. How am I going to bend these all the exact same length? I know. We'll bend them right up to the little... See those little things right on there, the little flat spots? 
we'll bend them at the flat spot that way we have a marking you'll need to watch me do this do you all right I got my blue tack hopefully holding everything in place now I can get in here and solder these guys in so we have had more snow this winter than we have had in quite some time they've been pretty dry winters the last few years this is kind of the January I remember as a kid although I would have been out sled riding if I was still a kid but of course we didn't have the latest Xbox in the in the 70s we're in the 80s we did at some point have an Atari 2600 I don't remember when they came out but we got one when they first came out and it was, it was a family gift so my sister and I had to share it which was fine um, I played that jungle adventure game all the time and California games I was killer at summer games and her thing was playing uh, bomber man if anybody remembers that one you played with the paddles so we used to play those all the time that sound you hear in the background that would be Dogley having a drink of water <laughs> alright we got our pins cut off ow Blue tack off of there, I hope. <laughs> Almost got it completely out. Come on. There we go. Now, I'm going to take this out. Kind of. Flatten all my LEDs out so they're in line. All right, good deal. Let's see what's next. Next on our list is one moment. Well, they actually want us to move on to something else, but I'm going to do this last LED first. because I like to do things in that manner you know I'm doing all the resistors and all the LEDs to me it just seems a more logical way of doing things then I don't forget anything later all right so next up is our transistor goes here and you'll notice we have a curve there a curve here so I want to match up our curves the pins just a little a little spread and I'm gonna leave that a little bit proud of the board because transistors can get hot Also, I'm going to solder the outside pins first. Make sure they look good. And then I'm going to cut the ones I just soldered. The reason I'm doing this is the holes are very closely spaced. And it can be hard to get that center hole without ending up with a solder bridge 
between the other ones. So you see now they're out of the way. I'm going to zoom in for you here. Yeah, that's, as, that's as zoomed in as I can get. But they're out of the way, and now you can just sneak in here. Get that last one. Doesn't look like a soldered bridge. And off it comes. All right, what is next? All right, we've reached a slight conundrum now. It's time to install the microphone. And a microphone is a polarized component. See those three lines there on the right? Those mark the negative pin. So this would be the negative pin. Now when you look at the board, there is no marking for the negative pin. So what can we do? Yeah. If you look here, this pin from the microphone is going over to the top pin of that capacitor, which is marked positive. Hmm. This pin is wrapping around and going to positive here. Okay. All right, let me get us up something pointy. All right, this pin, or this pad rather, takes off over here and goes to this square pad here. That square pad is negative. So this is our negative, negative, the microphone goes that way. Of course, now that I'm looking at it, those holes are off center, and if I would have put it in backwards, well, it wouldn't have looked right, would it? Still, they've marked the positive on everything else on the board. You know, I kind of think they should have marked that too. But hey, that's just me. If I were designing this, I would have marked that. I don't want to get that soldered in. And we'll clip off the excess. And I think that now we are on to capacitors. All right, the one microfarad capacitor. Yeah, one UF. Yeah, I know you can't see it, don't worry. It goes to C3. Remember, electrolytes are, po are polarized, so if you put them in wrong, definitely not going to work. Yeah, it's probably going to blow up, too, so bear that in mind. Yes, electrolytic capacitors do blow up. They don't burst into flames. What happens is that aluminum can will explode and blow stinky paper all over the place, and it does stink. But that is an aluminum can that will explode, and that can blow shrapnel at you, so take precautions as you see fit. We've got one more capacitor. This one is 100 microfarad at 16 volt, and it goes here. 
like so. We'll solder that in. We might just make it with what's left of our American-made TMI solder. It's from uh, New Jersey. I get it off of Amazon. I like it. But then I'm weird. I guess, well, I don't know. You guys are into electronics. You tell me. Do you have a favorite <laughs> solder brand, too? Oh, that's not my favorite. My favorite is MG Chemicals, but I couldn't get any when I ordered that. But I got some now. Okay, so I think we got to do some jumpers next. Yes, we have to do three jumpers. One, two, and three. And that's why... You don't throw away your cutoffs just yet. Now, shaping your jumpers. I like to use a pair of needle nose pliers to kind of gauge the distance there and then just bend them down and hope I'm close. See how close I am. Wow, I can't even see. One moment. That was pretty close. You don't have to be perfect. So, this next one I won't do quite as much. And I think I just did quite as much. Bah. Let's try another one. Let's see how this one does. Those non plated through holes are just about completely invisible to me because of the shadows and whatnot that's why I'm having trouble getting her in there I am not even going to tell you how long I had to fart around with those them in oh my goodness that was like painful but they're in now I think I did it mostly by feel These last couple things oops Then we should be about done. And the last piece. A little mail header. And this should be the end of our soldering for this project. Okay, well, I screwed that up. That's not supposed to be there. I'm supposed to put wires on there. My soldering pump is deceased. Oh, well. So is how it goes. Don't worry. 
there are other ways to do this. Solder wick will handle this mightily. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Put a little bit of flux on the board, a little bit of flux on the wick. And we got ourselves a nice empty hole. There we go. Hey, no worries. Now we can saw. Now we can solder the wire. In. Now it said to cut off oh, the plug. Be careful not to bend my LEDs. I'm not going to cut off the plug, and I'll, I'll show you why when we get there. It's like. A little convoluted the way they got you wiring this thing up. I want to try and simplify it a little bit. Just just the power wiring. So let's get these wires in their perspective holes. Okay. Now we can solder it up with just a very tiny bit I've got left. This will be fun. Okay, we're in there. Good. All right, take a look at this. This is from the instruction manual. It's showing our two power wires coming out of that board and being soldered up here. And it says they need to be soldered onto the pads, right? See? The wires need to connect to the pads. And that's what they're showing us here. Let me focus in on that better. All right. Anyway. Let's go over to the actual thing. There are no pads to solder to. So, we're going to do it a little differently. All right, here's our acrylic, clear acrylic back panel. This is our 2.1 millimeter barrel jack and power switch. This is the positive terminal, those are the negative terminals. What we're going to do is we are going to get some nice wire here. We're going to come from the positive terminal and break it at the switch. Get this one in here. Or something like that. Then we need to open up our new solder. One moment. All right, it's our new MG solder. Then we will nip off. The remainder, so we don't have any chance of a short circuit. Good. Then we grab another piece here. And that's going to go 
to the other side of our switch. Nice little hook there. Yeah, we'll solder that in as well. Hold that there for a second. terrible does it All right, I think I got all of our sub assemblies ready. There's the back panel with the power going in being broken by the switch. We have <laughs> our two speaker panels, which unfortunately are not square. So you can see there's some warpage there. Now I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet. Then we have the bottom panel with this board and the front panel with this one that has all the plastic on it because I had to drill these out slightly. If you don't have these LEDs back far enough, they don't fit all the way in. So a 730 seconds drill bit is still not enough. Look at that, look at that gap. Yeah, crap. All right, so here's my thinkings. Back panel, power. We are going to solder onto here, onto these pads. Let me uh, get this off. Hey, while I'm thinking about it, if you look down in the description, you will see an Amazon link that says, support this channel at no cost to you. Anything you buy through that link will let me make a couple bucks off of Amazon, which is good, and it won't cost you anything. So if you've been wanting to help out and support the channel, but you don't want to you know, do Patreon or PayPal or any of that stuff. Click on that link when you buy something from Amazon. Like I said, there's no extra costs involved to you, and I'll get a few extra bucks. I really appreciate your help. All right, I'm going to tin our power wires here so that when we connect them up to the pads, basically all we're going to have to do is solder them. Or just touch the soldering iron to them. We're not going to have to place whole big bunches of solder on there. All right, here we go. Let's see how I can screw this one up. <laughs> Since these are our power wires, we want to make very sure of two things. First, that we don't have any solder bridges. And second, 
that we've done the right colors together. Because if we don't, she's going to go boom. All right. Let's put this back together now. Let's see what we can do to assemble this thing. I won't make you watch. It's going to be painful. <laughs> well, after about 20 minutes trying to fiddle with these little screws and get them in their little slots, I gave up and super glued the thing. We're going to test it first before I put it on the top. I want to try and make at least one good decision today, right? <laughs> Yeah, here's hoping it don't blow up. Well, currently, it's not drawing any power at all. Hmm. No power's on. Wonderful. All right, let's have a look. Get out the meter. Got to start where you got to start. In this case, we're going to check to make sure we actually have voltage coming out of here, and we do. So then next, make sure, oh, look at that. Bluetooth now. Bluetooth mode. Interesting. Not sure what the what the issue is. Bluetooth mode. Okay. I think I don't have a good solder joint there. Interesting. Alright. Let's power it up. Uh, so we need to connect to Bluetooth. Pair new device. Hopefully it's this one. Connected. Oh, connected. Now let's turn this around so we can see what's going on down there. One second. Move the camera around. And hopefully we'll have music. Definitely not a music spectrum analyzer. Oh, it's not pulling enough current off of that thing. Bluetooth mode. Connected. And the volume is controlled with the phone. But you know what? All in all, not bad. This was uh, sent to me by a friend, James off of Amazon and uh, I'll put a link to it down below it lists for uh, $24 they are in stock it was fun you know um, all in all I've got about two hours into this let's put on the top 
now that everything is copacetic. This is Loctite thick super glue. And then I have some super glue accelerator. I'm just going to One thing I'll tell you about accelerator is you do not want to get it on your hands mixed with super glue or you are definitely going to be sorry. Don't ask me how I know. Just know that I know. There we are. And she's complete. All right, this has been a heck of a long video. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again, James. I appreciate it. That's it. I'm out. Peace.